Mary Lou Arnold is the long-established tour manager for Todd Rundgren. After hearing that Albert's artist Todd was opening a music video studio in Bearsville, Mary Lou simply showed up one day in January 1980 and said, do you guys need any help? After three years of working for him, Todd asked her to be his tour manager. She's been a constant presence in the Todd Rundgren ecosystem and fandom ever since, hugely respected for her work ethic, professionalism and beautiful spirit. Well, hello, Mary Lou, and welcome to Backstage at Bearsville. Thank you hello, so much Lucy. for coming in on such a cold day. It's great to have you here. It's great to be here. The reason we're doing this series is we're talking about women in the music industry over the whole course of their lifetime, from being a teenager through to their old age. And I'm interested in your story about your life in the music industry. So you started, I believe, in the 1960s in New York. No. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I mean, we could go way back. I mean, I grew up on Long Island, many all up Long Island. Uh, when I was in high school, I sang in all the theatrical productions and talent shows. And I wanted to be a singer, but my parents sent me to Buffalo <clears throat> to be an art teacher. So I got a degree in art education. Right. And I, I taught art for a couple of years, but um, it just wasn't what I wanted to do. You know, I really wanted to get into music. So in 1964, I was married at the time my daughter was born. We moved to Chicago and uh, I taught for a while. And then I joined um, the, a company called the Free Theater. And I studied music at the Center for New Music in Chicago. And I joined this theater company as a lead singer for this theater company. And I did five shows a week with them. And then I got divorced and raising my daughter as a single parent. So eventually I decided it was time to come back to New York. And my parents lived in Phoenicia, which is a little town just yes. west of here. So, and I figured my daughter needed extended family, you know, like to have cousins and grandmother yes. and grandfather yes. and stuff. So that's how I ended up here. And uh, I heard about this rock star who was gonna open a video studio. And I, with a degree in art and music, I thought, oh, perfect. Yes. You know, I got I to gotta do this. I got to show up. And I walked in there, that building, January 1980. This is the Utopia Studios, Studios just mm -hmm. across the way from the yeah, theater. Yeah, I did and said, do you guys need help? And I, they said, what can you do? I said, well, I have a background in art and music. I, I'm sure there's something I can do, a lot of stuff. So they put me to work cutting gels. And then I organized the opening. Uh, we had this big party Todd gave me this list of food to get, and I bummed tablecloths and silverware in China from my mother's church and put together the opening celebration of the building. And that's how I started with Todd. <laughs> so what was your first impression? So, I, I was blown away the first time I heard him sing. Yes. Because it, as a singer, you know, just hearing that voice, I was like, wow, <laughs> yes. this guy's a yeah. really good singer. Yes. And then finally becoming familiar with his catalog. And at the beginning, I worked on videos with him, music videos, just like a production assistant. And then I was an assistant to the production manager. And then two years later, Roger Powell came up to me and said, Todd wants you to be our tour manager. And I went, okay, what does a tour manager do? Exactly. It's a little different. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Never having done that. Mm -hmm. um, so they just threw me in. Why do you I, think he saw your potential in that field? He just, he told me once that I was like the most together person he met. I don't know. Uh -huh. I mean, I, I'm organized. I yes. mean, I'm very introverted in some ways, but for work, I'm totally focused. Mm -hmm. I'm not, I don't, I'm not very social. Mm -hmm. Neither is he. Mm -hmm. But um, I guess he saw something in me. So I just ended up going with Utopia down to Newark Airport. And I said, well, what do I do? He goes, he'll figure it out. <laughs> that was my introduction to tour managing. You'll figure it out. And you've been tour manager virtually ever since. Oh, yeah. Yes. Well, I worked for him for 40 years. Yeah. Who knew? Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's, mm -hmm. it's half my life. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and where have you been during these tours? I guess he's traveled all over the world. Oh, yeah. We went to Japan. A lot. I love Japan, so does he. Mm -hmm. 
and you know all over Europe and you know mm -hmm. just mm -hmm. a lot of U.S. tours. Mm -hmm. And I was also um, his production assistant, like when he would produce albums with XTC or the bands that recorded up in his studio, I'd be the person that went to the airport, picked them up, drove them up here yes, yeah. and made, you know, got hire people to do whatever needed to be done and yes. just kind of keep things running smoothly with the bands. So it was kind of multifaceted. I was interfacing with record companies and keeping budgets for productions and then Book, we'd go back out on the road. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, must have been fun, challenging. Oh, yeah. It was probably, well, it was the hardest job I ever had. I mean, because I was, you know, the, the last person to sleep and the first person up paying all the bills and taking care of all the band members. Yes. <clears throat> Besides, you know, doing the itineraries and the booking the flights and all that stuff. So it was a lot of work, and I didn't get a whole lot of sleep. <laughs> I know, and this was the pre-internet days when actually booking tickets and things like that, you just did it, and you did it manually rather than oh, yeah. going online and doing it. Yeah, and Utopia, they were, they were funny. They, they'd scatter, and in those days I could go and I would get their boarding passes for them, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and then so they didn't have to bother with that. That's not true anymore. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah... But the big bands, uh, I, you know, I was in charge of some really big bands, 13, 10, 12 mm -hmm. people mm -hmm. in the band, mm -hmm. and touring in a tour bus. Mm -hmm. It's a little, mm -hmm. you, you sleep in a bunk, but it's not the same as sleeping no, in a bed. So Even, but Ty would always try to um, keep everybody going to a hotel as much as possible, because mm -hmm he would rather sleep in a bed than in a bunk, but mm -hmm. we did a lot of bunk sleeping. <laughs> yeah, those yeah. miles you covered. So being a tour manager is quite a powerful position, isn't it? I mean, you're, you're in charge yeah. of the money, you're in charge of the people, yeah. you don't want things to go wrong, so you're having to be quite bossy, I would imagine. Was that difficult as a woman? Did you ever feel that you had to work extra hard to get people's I Aspect. had no perspective on it. There weren't very many women doing what I was right, doing. Right. So you had no um, role model? No, no, none whatsoever. I just had to create what I thought I should do. Um, it was really hard in the 80s because um, Eric had taken away everybody's credit cards and um, I had to settle everything in cash oh and God. pay everything in cash. Oh, so I would go like huge sort of four seasons of and peel off thousands of dollars at the front desk and they're looking at me like, whoa. And I would always carry the money on my body mm -hmm. and I would sleep with it because I'd heard stories about tour managers that got robbed. And I had a briefcase, but I never put it in the briefcase. Did you feel vulnerable when you were walking down the street? Yeah. 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 I but mean, did I didn't have any kind of security. No. I tried to always keep myself with Todd mm -hmm. and with the band. There weren't a lot of times where I wouldn't venture out by myself. Mm -hmm. There was only mm -hmm. one night I took a cab ride back to the hotel and the cab driver started going, wow, I guess you, they, you make a lot of money. Mm -hmm. And I just went into a little girl voice and said, I don't know, I do the costumes. That's all, I'm, I just do their costumes, you know, because I just had a sense of, oh, dude, yeah. God, and we're going through a bad neighborhood outside of Philly. And it's like, oof. And that's the only time I thought, I realized, geez, You're you know, I'm carrying $30,000. $30,000. $30,000. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was, what I did was I created my own persona. Mm -hmm. I wore black suits. Mm -hmm. I'm five feet, 10 inches tall. Okay, so I had to deal with all men. So I just always wore black, my black suits, my briefcase. I was all business. That was it. There was no hubba hubba stuff going on with me. You know? It was like I was just all business. And that worked. I mean, I, I got respect yes. from all the men that I worked yes. with. Yes. I think that's an important lesson for young women coming into the business today. It's like you have to define yourself. Yes. Don't be defined by other people because they'll always put you in the wrong box. You've got to be who you want to be. Yes. And be deadly serious. Yes. I was like just serious. Yes. I mean, there were times when I had to demand money from them if a, you know, a show hadn't sold that well. And What kind of personality do you have to have to be 
resilient and, and long-term in the music industry? Outside of you know, being really serious about what you're doing, you have to be able to focus. I mean, really be focused and very disciplined. Mm -hmm. I've seen people who think they want to do it. Mm -hmm. I've hired people mm -hmm. <laughs> who think they, they mm -hmm. want to do it, but get a little distracted. And mm -hmm. uh, you have to give up the socializing, the fun, the drugs, the drinking. Mm -hmm. you, 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 gotta, you have to be the one that's solid, rock solid. Mm -hmm. So it's not the fun that people imagine. Like a lot of people say to me, oh man, mm -hmm. you tour with a rock star. That's mm -hmm. supposed to be so much fun. It's serious business. Mm -hmm. yes. There's money involved, there's contracts, yes. and, and besides taking care of personnel, mm -hmm. you know, just keeping all your puppies in a row there, you know, mm -hmm. making sure everything's okay and dealing with bus companies and bus drivers. And this, you know, you really have to be able to give up all the fun stuff. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for coming in and being part of Backstage at Fairsville. It was so great to hear from you. Oh, well, my pleasure.